It is by far probably the worst park up I think I've ever stayed at. Ah, uh, how annoying. Damn it. We have been waiting for this for months. I just said yes, I absolutely love it. I feel in my soul depressed. I need to go and have some fun rainbows and butterflies. Oh my God. Put some water in there, a drop of water. Welcome back to the channel. We're Janine and Liam Day, a married couple in our late 30s who are attempting to live full time in the back of a removals truck in Britain. Each day we find new places to travel and wild camp and with it brings a new set of challenges as we adapt to living on the road. Van life in the UK has thrown its fair share of hurdles our way so far, but each week we persist and pursue our dream of leaving the rat race and experiencing a freedom we have only dreamed about. Unfortunately, things haven't gone to plan with Morgan as last week was the first time we managed to start properly living in here after numerous hurdles we've encountered. But now, hopefully with everything all sorted, we feel grateful to once again start full-time van life in our tiny home removals truck. So please subscribe, cross your fingers and hit the like button and let's see what happens this week. Good morning everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a really exciting video. We're sharing a lot with you on this video. There's lots of reveals, there's lots of upgrades. We're gonna show you about a big trip that we're going on. It's a really, really big video. Um, and we're gonna start the big trip as well. The first thing that's happening with a reveal that we're doing involves me taking the medical, which is where I am now, I'm in Coventry. I'm gonna go for the medical, I haven't got time to explain why, and I'll come and tell you afterwards what's going on with it. Okay, I've just come out of the medical. That was really easy. Why am I having a medical? The reason why I'm having a medical is because I am going for my C1 driver's license. C1 driver's license means that I can drive anything up to seven and a half ton. Frida, um, Frida, oh, God bless her. Um, Morgan is a three and a half ton vehicle. Um, she weighs three and a half tons or less, but we are so close to the mark that if we want to go into Europe at some stage, which we're hoping to do this year, then we would like her to be a little bit more able to be able to hold more stuff. So I am applying for a C1 license, which gets, gets me to drive anything up to a seven and a half ton vehicle. The process I'm, I have started today, and that process is getting a medical. It's called a D4 medical. It cost me 45 pounds online. It can cost to £150. You've really got to be careful because you don't want to get fleeced on, on this whole C1 license thing. I'm going to try and do it as cheaply as possible. So over the next two to three months, you'll hopefully see me go from today all the way through to actually getting my C1 license. We headed off making our way to Liam's mum's house as we'd been invited over for tea and donuts. But first we had to make a quick detour. And we've pulled in to Marks and Spencer's because we've only just literally this second found out that Percy pigs have turned vegan. So we saw a Marks and Spencer's and we thought, right, we're gonna go in and get some. <laughs> what a rock and roll lifestyle we need, eh? <laughs> Excited about the new launch, we grabbed some bags of Percy Pigs and enjoyed them with an iced latte before making our way to Liam's mum's house for donuts. Then eventually heading off to the van to start our next big adventure. Okay, so we're about to hit the road. Um, we will explain our big adventure very, very soon. We'll explain it tomorrow morning, but for now, we're heading towards Dartford we're both really, really hungry. All we've eaten today is donuts, donuts and uh, Percy pigs. So um, yeah, we're gonna go there, cook something up and get something healthy to eat. We pulled over in Beaconsfield Services so we could jump in the back of the van to find something to eat. So what we got is yesterday's um, bean chili, always nicer the next day. And I've got some homemade cornbread that I made in this van yesterday. I wish I got it on film because it was such a good recipe. Time was knocking on so we ate up really quickly and hit the road once more. We topped up our diesel which we found to be the most expensive we have seen yet and made our way to Dartford to find a park up near Dartford Tunnel that Liam found on the Park for Night app. It's very late, it's almost midnight and we've been travelling for ages and we've ended up God knows where. Like absolutely God knows where. I was trying to find a place next to the Dartford Tunnel that was the idea, right next to the Dartford Tunnel, Dartford Bridge or whatever. And we've ended up like, <laughs> like, like oh, 20, 30 miles outside of that place. I'm gonna concentrate now because I'm gonna get us back there because it was a really good location. We eventually found the park up in the early hours of the morning. We hopped in the back and went straight to bed. Chattanooga boy and dollar and a 
done. Hit it out for Nashville. Good morning, guys. I'm going to talk really loudly because this is our park up for the night and it is by far probably the worst park up I think I've ever stayed at. Um, it's really, really, really bad. It's just the noisiest uh, park up I think I've ever stayed at. It's got not just this road here, which is an A road, which must be when we arrived, it wasn't so bad, but also there's a bridge, which is probably a another really busy A road. So two A, a roads crossing over from each other. We got almost zero sleep. Um, it was, oh God, bad idea, man. Not, and this is what I said in the last video. When you don't do van life for ages, you fall out of the loop of it and you, you lose your instincts, um, or I do anyway. Uh, personally so I need to try and get them back and that's what we need to try and do we're right by the Dartford tunnel or bridge um, and that's where we're gonna go today so we're in Kent and I'm gonna once I go and find out what's going on with Janine I will um, explain what's gonna be happening where we're going and the big adventure that we're going on and despite the lack of sleep we're very excited about it so we've just woken up um, and Liam's brushed his teeth and we've completely run out of water day one we thought we had more we actually thought we had more water so we're gonna to have to go on a mission to get water straight away because it's so important. Um, so I don't know where we're gonna go, but I think that's the, our first job of the day. Isn't yeah, it? we've got no gauge to know how much water's in there. So I was thinking, for, I thought we had about 40 liters, almost half a tank, um, but we don't. <laughs> it's really interesting. We're gonna to have to do something about this gauge tonight. If anybody watching this, in comments can let us know what we can do about getting a, a water gauge or some some really simple water gauge or tips or tricks or something like that because um, we've just come across our first situation with it um, but we'll work it out now on a mission to find water we left the lay-by near the Dartford bridge and headed to a place called Gravesend there is a bakery called Vegan Antics we wanted to visit and thought maybe we could grab some water in exchange for doing some promotional work on our vegan channel so off we went to eat cakes in the name of hydration. So give me all that. Give me all that. This place looks awesome. <laughs> we're getting two sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches, and we're probably gonna end up getting some cakes as well and two coffees. It looks really good. I love little gems like this that you find. What a wonderful bakery that was. That was well worth going to Gravesend for, in my opinion. The only thing we couldn't get was water. Uh, the bakery was too far from the car park and it just wasn't practical, unfortunately. So we're still looking out for water. Hopefully we'll find some where we're going next. Now's a good opportunity to tell you the big trip. What is this big trip that we're doing and why are we doing it? We're gonna start in Kent and we're gonna end in Kent. And we're gonna do the full loop of England and Wales. So from this point onwards, we're gonna go up the whole east coast of England, all the way to the top of England. We're then gonna go right across the top and back down through the Lake District. As we come down through the bottom of Lake District and Cheshire and Liverpool and those places, we're gonna go and do the full coast of Wales, all the way down through Somerset and then Cornwall, Devon, and then back along the south coast to Kent, to Dover. Why Dover? We're going to enter into Europe for our very first time, very first time I've ever driven a vehicle in Europe. Um, it's going to be very interesting. We've never done anything like that before. So the whole plan is to get some serious, serious practice in and some assurances in with, with Morgan before going into Europe. So it's going to be a full loop of England, it's going to be a massive trip. And you know what? We're really excited for it. We have been waiting for this for months as you well know as you well know so from gravesend in kent we headed for the dartford tunnel and out the other side into essex the rain started to chuck it down so we saw an ikea and decided to pop in to pick up some bits we need for the van okay so it's the first time that we have come to ikea since we've had the van um and we actually we really need to go in for mainly for inspiration um, we've got lots of bits of space in the van that we could potentially use as storage but we don't know what to use it for and what to put where and how to use that space effectively. So we're going to go in there, have a look around and see if we can see anything and hopefully buy some stuff that's going to really help us out. So yeah, let's go. That one.
they should call this bit the van life section because <laughs> it's literally the classic spice rack and loads of other things really cool things i want everything we continued looking around at some really cool stuff bought some bits then headed back to the van okay so we have finished now in ikea um and we are completely exhausted as you know we didn't really get much sleep last night and that ikea trip just took the very last little bit of energy out of both of me and Liam so we are whacked we've decided that we're going to go and find our park up for the evening now we want to spend at least one night in Essex so we're thinking about heading to like a seaside um, town or like a beach or something so Liam's checking park for night now to see what we can find if we can actually do that we're going to head there park the van maybe pop out for a bite to eat or have something in um and yeah that's what we're planning to do so we're gonna find where we're sleeping and then go from there we left ikea and headed for the park up at south end on sea where we are now on a mission to find water do the job on it and there's beach huts down there and as you and i both know from travels around the whole uk that beach huts there's sometimes taps and that's the first thing that i'm gonna go do and check okay so Liam has gone to find some water. I have stayed here because I'm just too tired. Um, so he's on his mission to go and see if there's a tap down by the beach huts. So fingers crossed that there is. Um, I'm just praying because if he can find some water, we can have tea, brush our teeth, do some washing up if we cook. Um, that sort of thing. So it's really essential that we get water. Uh, Liam's coming back. Ah, oh, and it, it, with an empty jug. How annoying. So it looks like he hasn't found a tap. Damn it. We needed water, so we went for a walk to see if we can find some. What are you doing, Liam? Scouting around the, uh, not my finest hour. <laughs> Scouting around the Toby Carvery to see if we can see an outdoor tap. Um, and then now I'm about to do it with the Premier Inn as well. We spent enough time in the Premier Inn to, to they'll, they'll give us 20 litres of water, won't they? <laughs> no way! Ooh! It works! I'm gonna go and ask him on reception. Yeah, they didn't seem bothered at all. I can't believe we actually found a tap. I really didn't think we were going to. This is amazing. got water how awesome okay so this is the other um, upgrade that we've had recently it's not amazing it's not massively exciting but it's um it's a game changer for us because the previous ladder just fell to pieces in the end we had to just we had to get rid of it this one is a really sturdy 65 quid Amazon job it's got hooks on the top it's moderately heavy not too heavy um, it's telescopic so it does the bed and it does out here and it the most important thing is it's a hell of a lot safer done <laughs> and it's just really sturdy as well just so so it's got so much it's just so sturdy it's so good i don't know we checked amazon so much i don't know why we missed it it was hidden in plain sight the whole time um anyway we're dead happy with it okay so i am going to show you what we bought from ikea today we've got loads of stuff um Loads of really, really useful stuff as well. So I'm going to go through it now really quickly. Okay, so first of all, we've got an um, octopus thing that you hang up and you hang your clothes on and it, it sort of, it looks like an octopus. <laughs> so that's that. This, just, just so people understand, this is to dry your clothes and it's not just that we bought it because it looks like an octopus. <laughs> So next we have some like storage containers, that's for Liam because he needs one. Now we've got these, we'll show you these when we've put them up, they're like, um, it's like a rail that you stick to the wall and you can use it as like a, I don't know, we're not sure yet but we'll show you when we put them up. We've got some flannels, dishcloths, we bought this here because we need some sort of fruit basket and we thought that would be really cool to sort of hang up on the cupboards and put our bananas in it or something like that. So maybe we'll like pin it um, like that, I don't know, maybe to the wall or something. Something like that, anyway. And, and if I run out of underwear then I'll, I'll get some underwear. <laughs> You're not using the banana hammock for underwear. Now, these are to go with the um, these things. So you hook them, you hook them over and they hang. 
Again, I'll show you that when we put them up. I don't even know what this is. It slices vegetables really thinly. It's good for salads and, and roasts and stuff like that. It's, okay. it's my thing, don't worry about it. That's Liam's thing, it's like a vegetable slicer. This is really cool. This is like a mat that you can put down, you can put the washing up on and it soaks up all the water that runs off. So we've been using a tea towel up until now. So now we've actually got a thing, a proper thing to use that for. This actually will work with the mat. It's like a place to put your plates, a divider thing. So when you wash them up, you put them in the slots and then they drip on the new mat and they dry. So that's really cool because look, it goes into nothing. What are you having for dinner? Um, I'm just going to eat whatever's in the fridge or soup or something like that. Are you? Yeah. Okay. After dinner, I tested out a tip that I picked up from the YouTube channel Life Is Too Short about steaming your flannels to clean them. I'm pretty sure I did it wrong. Janine, the domestic queen, what's happening? <laughs> I tried out something for the first time and that's steaming the cloths to clean them. I did it, but I burnt them. <laughs> and, oh my god, they stink. And this one's actually stuck. I can't get it off. Oh my god. Put some water in there. The trouble was. Oh. I thought I could smell some really horrible smelly, <laughs> smelly burning. Oh. oh my god. I don't think water's going to get this off. You know, you know flannel's so good. And you, and you whacked it on full heat as well. I mean, it smells like, like burnt plastic. <laughs> Oops. It's a good job we bought some new ones today, isn't it? Yeah, but the whole, the whole idea is that we're reusing flannels, <laughs> not burning them once we've used them. Proper sausage. All my domestic duties tired me out. I fell asleep with a tea in my hand. When I woke, we called it a night and went to bed. Good morning everyone, today we have woken up in South End on Sea and it's absolutely gorgeous here, it's so peaceful. We had such a good night's sleep last night, it was, it was just so nice and peaceful. I fell asleep before 8 o'clock in the evening um, and I went to bed when it was still light, that's how early it was. Um, but I slept all the way through till this morning and I feel really good this morning. So we fancy some exercise, we're going to head down the road to go and check out this pier. Now this pier, we can see it in the distance and it is so long. <laughs> I've never seen a pier so long in my life, so we're going to go and check that out. We're also going to leave Essex today. We need to crack on with this trip, so we're going to head to Suffolk and that's where we're going to go next. So we're going to go see the pier and then come back to the van and leave to go to Suffolk. So off we went to go and see this really long pier. We parked up by the gorgeous sandy beach, noticing how clean it is and great that the council supplies enough bins to keep it this way. South End on Sea, for anyone who's um, wondering, it's got a very, very Skegness feel about it. Um, we've, been, we've been in Skegness recently, probably in the last couple of months, three months. And uh, yeah, it's definitely got that feel about it. Nice though, nice people, nice vibe, huge pier. Theme park that's not operating because it's just bloody freezing. A bit cold today. I can't believe there's actually a train on this pier. What's the time? Quarter past ten. No, it's five past ten. It's got to one in coffee. <laughs> You've not changed the clock. You're such a sausage. A little naively, we had no idea that Essex had the longest pier in the world within it. In fact, we had no idea Essex was such a large place until we visited it. The pier was so long, you could catch a train from one side to the other, which many did. After the bakery we visited previously, Liam and I decided to walk it, but ran out of time on the car park and had to peg it back. So we're now hoofing it back down the pier. That is the world's longest pier done. Um, actually quite nice, quite calm on the end of here. The temperature's sort of rising as well. You enjoy yourself, Janine? 
Yeah, that was lovely. Uh, but the car parking's literally just about to run out, so we've got to hoof it back. Wishing we had more time to explore South End on Sea, we walked past the beach and the infamous Adventure Island and headed back to the van. How the hell did that happen? Bird crap on the inside of the van. <laughs> we haven't got a bird in here, have we? You're going to have to touch it. Oh, it is. No way. Oh. How the hell did that happen? Oh, I have to get a wet wipe so we can do it properly. That, <laughs> honestly. How do you get bird crap on the inside of the van? Oh, it's because it's on the window, I think. So it must have just, it must have been oh, no. aimed, <laughs> shot that way from a distance. Bizarre. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. Okay, so we're going to one more place in Essex before we actually leave for Suffolk. Um, this place is, I'm so excited to go. We read about it online and uh, it sounds really interesting. So we're gonna head there now. So we just arrived at um, England's very own secret government nuclear bunker. It's actually genuinely a nuclear bunker. Um, and so if us or Morgan, um, if there's a nuclear strike whilst we're here, then we know that we're gonna be okay because we're at a bunker. Um, we're gonna be completely safe. So not that we want a nuclear bomb to go off, but you know, if you're gonna be anywhere, um, you wanna be in Essex at the nuclear bunker. Isn't that right, Janine? I, th I think uh, Morgan would act like a bunker anyway. I mean, look at him. Just look at him <laughs> in the background there. That, that, is a, that is safe as ours is. We were both feeling hungry, so went straight into the canteen. Oh, oh it smells so weird. Okay, so we're not actually in the bunker. We've come to the canteen first to grab a bite to eat because we haven't eaten all day, and then we're gonna go and see it. We realized upon entering the canteen that this is the actual canteen that was built for the bunker. They hadn't revamped this and had just left it in its original condition, which I personally love. The choices were limited, so we had crisps, a flapjack, and a coffee before going to check out the bunker. We made our way to the main entrance of the bunker, which was built deliberately to look like a normal house, hiding the secrets underneath. How cool is that? <laughs> just a normal looking house. Actually, it's a nuclear bunker. We wandered deep into the nuclear bunker and found it very eerie to say the least. It was absolutely massive and was built for 600 people to survive a nuclear blast and fall out afterwards. Liam grabbed an audio tour, which is something we aren't usually too keen on, but he said it was pretty good. The whole experience was incredible, but left us feeling a little depressed that the world could get into such a state that it had to be built in the first place and that decades later, nuclear war is still a threat. As far as museums and stuff go, that was incredible. I feel in my soul depressed. I need to go and have some fun rainbows and butterflies. But, um, <laughs> but with regards to actually an, an, an interactive experience, that was amazing. Um, yeah, I hope it and never ever comes to that, ever. We left the bunker feeling a bit low, so headed off to find somewhere beautiful to cook dinner. So we just pulled up by the river. We're not officially allowed to park here, even just to park here in the daytime because we're too tall. Um, so we are gonna just cook something here anyway, and if anyone comes and we can speak to them. Uh, and then after that, we'll move to a better parking space. Um, and then we're gonna go for a walk in this beautiful, beautiful area, which is called Dedham near Ipswich. And it's just stunning. Thank you, this looks really good. We finished our delicious dinner and decided to walk around Dedham to see why it's an area of outstanding natural beauty. It was a beautiful place, a quaint town with just a few shops and pubs and a river running through it. There we go. left this sleepy town to go and find our park up for the evening. Yeah, so this is our park up for the evening. There's no need to be stealth. It's just in a lay-by. We're next to the A212, I think it is, or 217 or something like that, but you can barely hear it and you really can't hear it. It's not like the one the other night where we had busy road right next to us, busy road, right, busy bridge right next to us. This is, this is fine. Loads of farm fields on the left of us. No cars coming up and down this actual road here. It's another completely unused road. And yeah, I'm really happy with this. Um, so it's late. 
sun's not gone down yet, even though it's it's late. It's eight o'clock. Well, it's not late. It's eight o'clock. Good morning, everyone. This is us in our king size bed at a forty-five degree angle, drinking tea. We're just looking out. Well, how, firstly, how did you sleep? I slept really well last night. Yeah, me too. It's a uh, it's another free park up. Um, it's pretty good because the majority of our surroundings are farm fields, and the, there is a road nearby, busy road nearby, but you can just hear it in the background barely. So it's not bad, it's, and the actual road that we're on is pretty peaceful, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so what more could you ask for? Today we are on the outskirts of um, Ipswich, and that is probably where we're going to head into. So it looks a little bit grey, we're looking at the skylight here, pitter patter of rain, but I'm sure it will clear up later on, and, and we'll go and see what this the Suffolk coast is like. We got out of bed, prepped the van to leave, and left this reasonably quiet park up to head off to check out Ipswich. <laughs> Ipswich was our next destination in Suffolk. It appeared to us on first arrival more like a city rather than a town. We struggled to find a car park that would let a tall vehicle in, so ended up having to spend £13 to park on the seafront for the day. Ouch. The waterfront was actually really nice and lined with cafes and bars, which we assume will be buzzing in the height of summer. We explored the streets, ate a jacket potato, and visited the magnificent Christchurch Park, a massive 12th century park where you could easily get lost in. We liked Ipswich, but didn't fancy finding a park up here for the night so decided to head back to the beautiful nearby village of Dedham for something a bit more serene. So we've managed to find a really good park up. It seems legit so far. All you can hear are birds tweeting. It's golden hour. It's beautiful. This is, should be a really 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 good uh, park up. We look like um, I don't know what we look like there. Like we're meant to be. We're part of the furniture of this, this park up already. Um, thank you for watching this video. Janine's got one more upgrade that she wants to show you before we leave uh, and before we have our fruit salad that we're both craving so much. Um, just want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting the, the like button and the notifications bell below. Um, we'll see you next time for the second leg of this huge trip that we're doing before we enter into Europe. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you soon. Okay, so I have a new upgrade to the van and I'm so excited about it actually. Um, as you can see behind me, I was talking about these curtains on one of our first uh, wild camping in this van vlogs that we did and I just wasn't sure about them and I spoke to a few different people and Liam's mum has kindly made us some new curtains and she found some really nice fabric and she said, do you like this fabric? And I was... I just said yes, I absolutely love it. And it's perfect, so I'm gonna show you now exactly what she made for us. And I really, really hope you like it as well. Um, but I absolutely love it. So, we have gone for a yellow color with these gorgeous blue tabs on. Um, so yeah, it's really gorgeous, like just lighter than mustard yellow. Um, but they're just going to look amazing up there and I'm going to put them up for the first time now and see what they look like. That looks even better than I thought it was going to look. That is so nice. Oh my god. Liam, come and look at these curtains. I, I am so impressed with them. I absolutely love them. I knew they'd be nice. Oh yes, They're, they are awesome. They look like they were meant to be. If this van came with those curtains, I would say yes, they're the right curtains. Do not change them. They are awesome. So good. The sun set and golden hour swept across Suffolk. Birds sung their evening song and we ate dinner in complete serenity. It's moments like this that make van life so special and why we got into this way of living in the first place. That night we lay amongst the trees and looked forward to the road ahead. Thank you for watching. We hope we have earned your subscription and we will see you next time. You know what we have, let's hold on tight. Found what we're looking for in life.